Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. In today's lecture, we are going to start with the third chapter of VTH that is noise, vibration and harshness testing. These three different terms are very interrelated terms. That's why it has been accounted in a single chapter. First of all, we will begin with the understanding of definition of noise, vibration and harshness. Later on, we will understand the different sources of the noise and vibration and which are the different ways to control that. So let us begin with the definition part of the three different terminology. The first one is a noise. Noise has been defined as an unwanted sound. This uh, clear cut indication line between this noise and vibration is the unwanted. But technically if we want to see is this sound has been measured in the terms of a decibel. Right? If the decibel quantity of the sound is more than 70 decibel, it is naturally been treated as a noise right? or the unwanted sound. The second term is the vibration. Wherever there is a displacement of some quantity from its very specific point, then it is called as a vibration. This displacement may be again and again or repeated in, in its term, then it is called as a vibration. The third definition in our title that is a harshness. Harshness is actually a very difficult term to define because that is a particular feeling which is associated to the noise and vibration. But this feeling can be different to the different different person. Still the definition feels complicated. Let us understand that with the help of one example. Say for example, these two different uh, cars are there, Ferrari and the Rolls Royce, very famous car, right? Ferrari has been preferred by those customers who actually like the humming pattern of the car. Ferrari is very famous for that. But still, there is a class of people who just prefer a silent nature of the car. They will definitely go for the Rolls Royce, right? So, both the cars are considered as imported cars, but still, some will prefer the Ferrari, someone will prefer the Rolls Royce. That is due to the feeling of the noise which is associated with this both the car is different, right? So, harshness is uh, actually depending on the person to person. That's why it has been treated as a difficult term to define. Now, let us understand the different sources of the noise from the automobile. We will just begin with the major source noise source generating element that is the engine noise or the combustion noise. Here at the engine compartment there is a transmission of fuel energy into the generation of the indicated power. At that particular instance lot of heat has been generated and as well as due to that combustion effect. Apart from that there is a frictional force applicable at the surfaces of the piston and the cylinder. That has been accounting a huge amount of engine noise. The second noise is a driveline or the transmission noise. Whenever we are changing a gear, naturally there is a meshing and the free of the gears which can lead to the generation of noise in this particular driveline assembly. That is the second source of noise. The third one is the axle noise. Axle is directly connected to this, our wheel. Wheel has been attached with this road. So from this particular road surface, the noise and the vibration has been transmitted to the even excel part and the amount of noise coming from that particular part is nothing but it is a excel noise. Next one is a wind noise. Wind noise can be easily measured with the help of a wind tunnel but here the concept says that we need to reduce the wind noise. Due to this effect of drag of air on this particular automobile profile, it can generate an ample amount of noise. At the earlier days or the earlier history of the automobile, people were not focusing on the particular aspect outer profile of the automobile. So let us just take the example of ambassador, old ambassador. It just feel like a rectangular section, right? So that cars are actually generating a huge amount of wind noise. But nowadays we are focusing on this CFD analysis in which we make the material like that or the profile of the car like that in a, such a way that there is a minimum impact of the air drag on the automobile. So due to that minimum impact even the wind noise would be less, right? Next is the interior noise. Interior noise is the noise which is uh, coming from the interior compartment of the particular car, whether it is coming from the 
music system, air conditioning system, or any of the upholstery which is making noise. Another one is a brake squeak noise. Normally, we are having two different kind of noise when we talk about a brake noise. One is a brake squeak noise, and another one is a brake grinding noise. This squeaking noise is actually the indication that our brake pads is getting started, getting worn out, right? So that particular noise is normally in the form of a whistle, right? When we blow a whistle, that kind of noise, if you feel that it is a brake squeak noise. The another one is a tire noise. In the very abrupt road condition, if you are driving, then obviously the tire noise would be very high. So that depends totally on the road surface. Another is uh, the external noise, the noise which is coming from the external part of the automobile and it has been filled inside the compartment of the car, that is nothing but the external noise. That may be due to the amount of uh, noise coming uh, from the exhaust gas part or due to the overheating or from the engine noise or from the brake noise. Now let us understand the different sources of vibration. But before even starting this particular concept, let me just clear that this noise and vibration are actually two phases of a single coin, right? If noise is there, vibration would always be there. If vibration is there, chances of noise is there, right? So the sources naturally would remain common. So even in the case of vibration sources, there would be vibration due to engine, wind, even rain or due to the traffic even that is from the exhaust gas part, right? Now let us understand the different ways in which we can control this particular noise. When we talk about this noise control technique, the first thing which came on into our mind is the damper, right? We all know that in the suspension system, we are keeping this just to dampen the vibrations, right? It will try to isolate the vibration, right? Once the vibrations are been isolated, naturally the noise would also be reduced. So we can use this kind of dampers. Another one is a sound insulation materials. If the incoming sound is there and we place in between certain material, which can absorb sound and at the output end, the outgoing sound decibel quantity would get lowered. This absorbed sound would be, may naturally be converted into the form of heat energy, but it would be absorbed. You will feel less sound after the sound insulation material. So this has been used just to reduce the external noise felt inside the compartment of the car. Now let us understand how to control the brake noise. As I told earlier, first noise, that is a brake squeak noise, maybe in the form of whistle kind of sound, you feel that, that right? Whenever this brake squeak noise happens, you need to go for the lubrication of this particular assembly, right? A molybdenum based lubricants are available. You need to sprinkle that on this particular apparatus. If you are not taking any action, then that brake squeak noise would be converted into brake grinding noise. Grinding noise, it has been said because it is having a similar kind of sound whenever two metal surfaces are being grind, right? So that will just uh, collapse the life of your particular braking assembly. So you, you need to have a proper maintenance of this particular braking part, right? So this is a way use of lubricant just to reduce the brake noise. Now let us understand the different noise effect on the human being. The major effect which has been caused due to the noise pollution is the increased stress level, irritation level, nervousness, sleep disturbance, or the increase in the blood pressure. If you are staying in an atmosphere where the sound value is more than 70 decibel for a longer period of time duration, then you can suffer from this particular effect. Now let us understand the effect of reflecting surface. This has been important just uh, if we want to reduce the sound, we can use this particular fundamental. Say for example, this surface is there on which some sound rays has been falling on, right? That has been falling at an angle of theta i with reference to vertical axis. Then this particular reflecting surface will reflect this incident ray at an angle which is equal to theta i. If theta i value is 30 degree, then it will reflect the ray at 30 degree itself. So here the theory says that theta i value would always be equal to theta r. So that is the concept of the reflecting surface. 
Now let us understand last taste of the noise vibration and harshness testing that is a pass by noise method. It is considered as one of the most important theory. In this particular test, we are having two different reference line. We are conducting this test in an open ground, in an open air condition, right? We will mark two lines, that double A line and double B line, which has been kept at a 20 meter distance, right? But at the center point of 20 meter line, we are uh, keeping one again horizontal line, right? At the center point of this particular line, from both the particular distance at 7.5 meter away, we will keep two microphones. And at the center point of that, we will place the vehicle. So, we will start the vehicle from point number double A. We will start accelerating vehicle gradually, right? We will keep that acceleration up to this point number double B. Now, as you know that, what will be the recording on this microphone? Microphone will indicate the sound which has been coming out from the vehicle. So, whenever the vehicle is at this particular center line position, at that particular instance, the sound decibel quantity would be higher. Initially, uh, it will be uh, lowered, then it will increase, and from this particular point onwards, it will start getting decrease, right? In that particular way, the graph would be there of the sound decibel. But the peak point, that is need to be analyzed by the pass by noise method. That peak point must be as per the homologation norms of different, different countries, right? If it is not satisfying that, then the homologation would not be passed, vehicle would not be certified. So that's all about the today's lecture or the third chapter of VTH. Finally, thanks for watching.